announcement. For passengers, please make sure they have their belongings on them at all times. Any unattended baggage will be taken by police and destroyed. I'm here, I'm a deer. 98.5% of my life decisions are dictated by fear. Ain't nothing anyone can do about it. They've tried two weeks since I last posted a video. I'm just setting you up to be disappointed when I don't do this again in the future. You know what your problem is? Other YouTubers spoil you. They give you content like, every single week. Some of them give you content every single day. It's too much, it's too much. I offer you inconsistent, sporadic content that may or may not appear when it says it's going to appear. I'm keeping you on your toes, telling you you're gonna get a video every single month and then I just don't turn up when I say I will. And then at the exact moment you think I've become unreliable and inconsistent, here I am again, back on time, before time, before you even expected me. Probably when you didn't even want me. I'm here to be an inconvenience. Oh, by the way, this is not Vlogstis. This is just me vlogging around the winter solstice with some holiday related things thrown in. Which I will admit does sound exactly like Vlogstis. Now I say it out loud. But it isn't, I promise. Basically my plan with this month, since I've taken more or less the entirety of 2021 off from making YouTube videos, I would like to start easing myself back into a more regular upload schedule in 2022. But if I just try and jump into it in January, I'm definitely going to fail. Because I, I, I'm not good at this anymore. I mean, I wasn't very good at it to begin with, but... I've gotten worse. I do hope you'll enjoy it anyway. And this one does have some holiday themed stuff in because we're gonna be doing the decorating. I have the entire tree to decorate, well, almost the entire tree. I've done the lights and I've done the ribbon, but I haven't done anything else. That's actually a lie. I've done the entire thing, but I forgot to film this bit before I decorated it. And the bit before I decorated it, I'd only done those bits. As far as you're concerned, I've only done the lights and the ribbon and I'll do everything else right now. So enjoy that. Fresh coffee and bagels too A new day is waiting for us We got lots of fun stuff to do Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys I can lend them your baseball cap Let's make the day a very lot of fun Growing up is just a trap Don't it seem like a trap Up is just a bit fat trail. I take pride in ever working that day. Can't see the use of it anyway. Who can think of such a load of crap? Growing up is just a trail. an idiot. Pretend that's new information. I was so flustered in my last video when I was building this enclosure that I forgot to do one really important thing which somebody in the comments uh, reminded me of unintentionally but I, I, I forgot to seal in the wood with silicon which is fine because that's something you do after you've built it but that was kind of an important part of building the main frame. The problem is if I seal the cage now I then have to wait 48 hours before I can do anything else with the cage and 
I don't feel like silicon sealing a cage on its own and doing nothing else makes for very good content. Um, so we're gonna pretend I've done that bit already. We're gonna move on with some of the shelving and then while I'm off camera, I'm gonna take all the shelving back out and I'm gonna seal it in properly. Ah. Also, I have no idea what I'm doing anyway. I'm gonna go through my flip book and see if I've, oh, I wasn't even a shot then. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm going to go through my sketchbook and see if I actually wrote down any plans of what I wanted to do. I did. They don't make any sense. What is this? Oh, that looks like effort. Why would I, why? Why would you do that? Future me, if you could go ahead and take a picture of the sketch of the thing that I'm making so we can put it up on screen now so people can see what the heck it is without all those other weird drawings around the outside to confuse everyone, that would be fantastic. I don't really know what I'm doing with the inside of this cage. I have a few different designs that kind of, they could work together, but ultimately I am just sort of winging this and doing one thing at a time and seeing how things work together. And if they don't, well, they don't. Make it up as you go along and hope for the best. So this is the frame that my shelf is going to be sitting on and my idea is because it is a pain when you've got a lot of deep substrate and you've got a lot of shelves in there it's a pain to have to take those out in order to clean under them especially if your hamster nests in there every once in a while you've got to clean out the nest because of urine and things like that it's a nightmare to take the whole shelf out because then all the substrate falls in tunnels collapse it's just bleh. so what I want to do to try and avoid that issue is I'm gonna be, once again, using dowels like I did in the lid, but this time much looser fit dowels. So the top shelf will sit on top of the dowels and then it'll just be easily removable. But when it's in place, it won't be able to shift around or anything. I don't know how well I'm explaining that. Hopefully it'll make more sense when you see it. However, while I have been doing that, I have also figured out, I figured out the next step of where I'm going with this DIY and I wanna sketch it down before I forget. Where is my good pencil? Right, so I'm thinking, like a sort of a picket fence situation. It's cute, right? We can we can pretend it's a picket fence. Maybe build a a housing thing up there. Again, very rough. This is just to keep the idea in my head. Like a train tunnel kind of situation. How about that? I like that. Yes. And then inside there's going to be sort of a wall to divide down the hiding area. In theory, overall, looks crap. Hopefully, we'll look better by the time I'm done. Can I do an ad reel in the middle of a vlog? Is that weird? It's a little bit weird, isn't it? I'm gonna do it anyway. Today's video is once again sponsored by nobody. Because why would they? Is it because companies don't wanna be associated with me? Maybe. Or is it because I never reply to their emails? Possibly that one. So as usual, today's video is sponsored by my merch store, erinsanimals.com. Go and check it out, buy some uh, mediocre merch. This is my current favorite design. I love this, it's so cute. Buy this, or any of the other stuff. Or nothing at all, if, if, if it sucks, I, it's understandable. If you'd rather just come to my house and punch me in the face, that's fair as well. Now back to the vlog.
One wall done. So hopefully that's everything cut out that I need to cut out for this particular part of the project. We've got the front wall with the little tunnel and uh, this thing which we'll address in another video. This is the top part of the shelf, the main part where all the stuff will go. The support thing, fantastic job of describing this. And the dividing wall that's gonna go in the middle which has two little slots cut in it so it fits in the support. And of course there's the painting which is going to be the most tedious and time consuming part. I'm probably going to be doing that until the very late hours of this evening. Yay. All in all though, it's going pretty well. A little different than all the rest A quite old fashioned wear a hat sometimes play chess And when I'm out I'm looking for How many times have you now heard me tell myself not to paint bricks on anything? This is, this is now three times and I have not learned that this is the most tedious, time consuming, boring thing. I mean it looks great, I flippin' love the way that looks, but the actual painting process is just the worst. I mean it's kind of worth it, I guess, because that oh. Oh, it does look good. You know, I realized earlier in the video I referred to this as a train tunnel and that is because I apparently forgot the word for archway. So let me correct myself now. Here's the archway that has been painted with its own uh, separate set of bricks, which I think makes it look lovely, as well as the small little hole down here. The funniest thing about this, after I've spent all that time painting all this detail, um, the substrate level is gonna come up to about here on it. <laughs> Like, it's gonna be almost completely covered. So you're not actually gonna see most of this detail 
once it's in a set up enclosure. Yeah, this was stupid. <laughs> Painted the back side of this piece and the dividing wall in the center a nice neutral brown color. And the support piece, I have just painted a plain gray, although I am going to do some stone detail, I think, along this edge because this will be the only visible part of the frame. And here in the center support piece, I have drilled two holes which go all the way through the wood. These are for the dowels to just be dropped into so they are slightly bigger than the dowels I'm using, uh, which will be fitted more snugly into the shelf on top. Oh, my voice is getting tired. So this piece here is going to be the roof of the hide as well as being the shelf of the shelf. The underside is painted brown to match the inside of the hide. The edges I've painted the same ready brown that I used for the brick texture, although this front piece is going to be covered up once it's finished and the top bit I uh, haven't done anything with because I'm going to be coating it with cork. By the way, you can buy cork sheets in pretty much any craft store. You can also buy them in a bunch of places online. You can probably find them on Amazon. Um, they're quite affordable and very easy to get your hands on. And to fix it in place, I'm using some non-toxic water-soluble glue. This is just standard PVA school glue that you can pick up cheaply in pretty much any stationery shop. And we will flip. Ooh. Lovely, lovely. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a piece that was the exact right length. So I do apologize for everyone who's bothered by this little strip of here. I am also bothered by it. Hopefully by the time this whole thing is completely finished, it won't be that noticeable. La 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 la. I do believe we are finished with the pieces and now all that's left is to assemble it. First thing, let's join the divider to the support. So that slots in nicely there. And I'm just going to shove two screws through the frame into the divider. Sorry, you can't see it very well. It's a, it, it's a small space. I don't have a lot to work with when it comes to angles. One in the other side. Security test. Yeah, that's fine. And now the front piece. And in order to preserve the aesthetic of the front, I'm going to be fixing the screws in from the back side so they're going in through the frame here and into the front piece. They won't be visible at all. And in fact, a little additional piece of support. I won't put some glue just to be sure everything stays together. Together forever and ever and ever and ever. Or at least until I get bored of it and recycle it into something new and screw it from behind. Safety test. Good. All right, so I have added one screw to the front part down here at the bottom, and that was just to pull this centerpiece a little closer to the front because there was a small gap forming there um, from where I hadn't quite cut it perfectly straight, and that's just fixed that. So the final piece, we have the top shelf here. All the cork is dry and well stuck. Underneath there, you can see the two dowels, and all I have to do is drop them into those two holes I showed you earlier. Done. I'm going to quickly pop this inside the enclosure just so you can see or get a better idea of how it's going to look once it's actually in use. So there it is inside the enclosure. Of course, we still don't have the glass on the front here, but once we do, this section under the shelf will be visible. It will be a viewing point, while this bit back here will be a lot more private and more of a hideaway area. So this is now my starting point to help me decide what else I'm going to do with the rest of the space in the enclosure. I have an idea for what I'm going to do at this front bit. I'll have to have a bit of a brainstorm over what's going on in this part. Also, this will need some kind of ramp or bridge or staircase or something so the hamster can actually access the top of the shelf, but I will address that much later on once I've figured out exactly what I'm doing with the rest of the cage and what will work best for this setup. And to demonstrate the ease of access with the top part, there is a slight lip on the front here, which I can get my fingers under, and then I'll just be able to lift that up. And now I can access both of these sections so it'll be nice and easy to clean without having to take the whole thing out and disrupt all the bedding that's going to be in the front here and in this section here. As for all the other details that you saw on the sketch, the picket fence, the houses, all that stuff, we're going to be working on that in my next video because that's going to take a few days to complete. This actually took me seven days to complete. You'd be surprised just how long these projects do take, uh, even working on them a few hours every day. 
it's it's not a quick process but for now this is where i'm going to pause this project and end this particular vlog i do hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it entertaining interesting inspirational i don't know whatever you found it i hope you found it i hope you experienced emotions today thank you so much for watching all the way to the end and i will see you guys soon bye